parents and guardians anyone dealing with children are going to face a kind of tough time during the holiday season so with this resource i am hoping to give you the ammunition like a battle plan of how to navigate this uh quicksand this quagmire this discombobulating issue mm -hmm. look that up discombobulation <laughs> this issue of screen time during the holidays so children have either started their holidays are about to or have already have either started or about to begin <laughs> their holidays and this particular set of holiday is a lengthy one i believe from what i'm getting it is eight to ten weeks now having your children for a lengthy period of time in the house without them going to school um discombobulation mm -hmm. confusion is the name now how do you navigate this very enticing world of screen time technology social media like i want to see what is there and even for you there are christmas movies and everything else there's a world cup and whatever other shenanigans are on tv now you want your children to enjoy you don't want to be too strict but at the same time you don't want to just come back home and when you ask what did you do they have not done their duties they have not done their homework. They have just been on TV or doing other things or on their gadgets. So how do you create a battle plan? Because the thing about it is you don't just jump in, especially Watoto was Kohizi. Our time when our parents looked at us, we knew. Mm -hmm. We knew terms and conditions applied. And by that time, we did not have as many gadgets. We did not have uh what fancy, fancy technological devices. And outside was a playground. Where you live, yes, there could be space, but it's kind of gated, it is kind of guarded. It's not out in the plains, kind of, because most of us have uh, different upbringings. Now, the children have come home and they know they are on holiday, which means who rolls out the window or through the door or whatever other crevice there is in the house. So they are looking at a season of freedom, away from rules and regulations yes the house is there but house is like their playground so when they wake up they will want to wake up anytime but suspiciously or weirdly they usually wake up very early and want to sleep very late and yet if it was you you would make the most but that is them by the time they are coming for holiday if possible that first weekend sit as a family and come up with terms and conditions i always emphasize on family meetings because when you stand in front of them or you declare that by doing this house there are some which you declare non-negotiables that i will i will try and come up with that list but in your house i believe with your values there are some non-negotiables those ones you state until further notice when they get their own house they shall have their own way of going about it but when it comes to other issues and especially in this um enticing with this interesting word of screen time you need to come up with terms and conditions so in the past in my generation we used to have a tv guide of what program comes when nowadays you switch on the television you switch on the gadget whatever it is if i get bored with one device i will get entertained by another it wasn't just one thing so if you're able to ask the children, like, what are these programs that you definitely need to watch, if possible? I'm not saying you have to. Remember, I always put a disclaimer, do what works for you. So if the children, like for you, if you're a parent, when you have to watch news, you have to watch a certain program for you to be, oh, at least my day has come to an end, and then you transition to sleep, then find out from the children, by the way, in the first week or in the first three days, find out which programs and then note what time they come on which channel. Then if they are able to, they can have the TV guide. Yes, it may seem like it is wide open, but you can still provide a structure. So what programs would they want? Is it uh, PJ Masks or whatever else, cartoon and series or whatever it is? This makes the child intentional with what they are going to watch. It's not just flipping or scrolling through channels. Because intentional watching, like you're learning something or you want to be entertained by it, is better than just, hmm, 
scrolling and not um, feeding or not being tuned to what you're watching. So if you can, they can be specific with what they want to watch, great. Then the other thing is, and I keep emphasizing this, introduce wireless. Is it wireless? No. Non-screen items. Non-technological activities. Basically, other activities that don't involve the television. If right now, and I keep asking parents and guardians this question, if you, as an individual of whatever age, if there was a blackout and the gadgets ran out of power, what would you do? And you're not able to go out because maybe it's raining or whatever it is. What do you do when the, you are not able to access your gadgets? The TV, the, the, the tablet, the phone, whatever it is. If you are not able to, like even for you, decide. But the same way you're saying, you're telling the children, no TV, no phones. Even for you, I know you are the breadwinner and the rest. But how long can you stay away from the gadgets? This is the life we live in. So even for you, you sometimes you have to tell yourself, like, wake a candle until a certain um, number of minutes, an hour, then I will tap back into the, the gadget. Sometimes we succeed, other times we don't. So if you are in, enforcing a rule to the children, and yet when you get home, you are not following the same kind of rules, or you're saying it is going to be a screen-free day, but you're the one who is maximizing on all the screens. Usually, the role model is lacking in that scenario. So, do they have, can they spe be specific with what they want to watch? And then, can they be, have a time? If there's a guardian who can monitor that, great. If you need to enforce screen-free times, in increase the number of activities they need to do that will get them away from the TV. And this is where I want you to now brainstorm. CBC and whatever else educational program you are in. I believe there's a, the creative aspect of the children that is being nurtured. Hopefully that is the case. Now, when we say about books, yes, these are my books. On this uh, further end, the children's books are there. Increase the number of recreational reading materials. Let the children go look at the second-hand vendors. Go to the bookshops. Let your child select the books. And then they are interested in what they have picked. Yes, there's a financial aspect to it. If you're not able to, if within the neighborhood that you are in, you can have a book. It's called a book swap. You have, you exchange books. Why not? Increase. Don't say no TV and you're not giving them the option because they can only play outside for two, for whatever minutes and then they come back. And the TV is more entertaining than other things. So what do we have in mind? increase the number of screen-free activities, books. And instead of just telling them, read the book, why not say that on a certain day, at the end of the week when you're able to cool down and the rest, everybody has been reading a certain book, a certain number of chapters, and then you have a family night where someone tells you, Munazima, you switch off the TV, and then you have a conversation of, by the way, my storybook or my book was about this. This is where the child is able to internalize the book. And books don't keep changing screens. They don't have shifting colors like the TV. So they have to concentrate. And that is a skill they will need on the road when they are applying, when they are working, when they are doing, manufacturing, whatever it is. Long-term memory. And the screen doesn't help with that. So everybody get a book. Bible. Your, the word, the, the, depending on your faith, newspaper, whatever it is. And then on a certain day, everybody gives a report, either written or and orally. And by the time they're standing in front of you, you're encouraging your child with public speaking and getting over the fear of talking in front of people. Because if they can be comfortable in front of you, then the rest of the world is manageable. So reading increase the number of books it can be magazines it doesn't have to be so expensive in the economic times that we are in but increase them now i will be reading another others so that you can just see the painting the drawing you can have board games i believe by now especially when the pandemic hit we had that aspect of board games baking come up with as many recipes yes with a say with a guardian there keeping them safe but how many varieties of sandwiches can they come up with? Let them learn how to cook. They will know about measuring. They will know about um, what 
time management ingredients do they need to buy in advance they need to budget so basically you're looking at one activity and then you break it down and you see by the way we are going towards the christmas season why don't we make holiday cards for our family why don't we make holiday cookies for our family and friends so it becomes an activity that you check in with each other and you're not just going to work and then them they're just thriving in at home with no rules and the rest you can have the what do you call it recycle and also have a garden like a kitchen garden whereby you're trying as much as possible yes you have the tins it can be at the balcony at the window it can be somewhere nice but can you have like a hub kitchen let them grow something the the joy of seeing something grow is immeasurable so by the time you're looking at all this you can even have ah yes back to reading a spelling bee I have used the word discombobulated. Do you know how to spell the word discombobulated? Come up with a series of words and then see, by the way, by the end of the week, can we all use that, spell it? Can we use it in a sentence? How many new words can you come up with? So you're increasing the vocabulary. At the same time, you're moving them away from too much of screen time. Then, what are they saying? You can have a, that was called like a spelling bee. You can have a picnic. You don't have to have supper like mokimo and everything. Have a picnic. You can also declutter your clothes and the toys. Tell them, by the way, in one basket, in one chon, kiondo, chondo, put the ones you want to keep, put the ones that you'd like to give away or the ones that are really spoiled. So it's the clothes or the toys. And then you can volunteer in an institution that you choose. And in that way, you are trying as much as possible to keep the children occupied. Yes, they'll have the screen time, but they'll still be learning other skills on the side. So I'm hoping that this has been insightful. And I believe in the coming um, seasons, coming videos, we'll be looking at, okay, so they have done their chores. They have done what they need to do. How do you catch them doing good? And that is where we have them. The rewards how do you reward because in the previous videos we looked at consequences but also we have our good side the children are not always bad so we shall look into the rewards okay so thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing as the numbers grow i'm hoping that the impact also is widening because we need each other in this parenting and child development journey so i'll see you soon in my next video 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 let us come up with new names. <laughs> and I'm hoping that you will enjoy it. Keep safe and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.